Hi, I'm Gwendolyn Stirk, and I'm happy to be here today with Felicia Houston of the University of Chicago Ingalls Hospital Group. How are you today, Felicia? I'm doing well, Gwen. How are you? Good. So I know that a lot of changes are being implemented through this COVID-19 circumstance. And what I'm asking for you is if you can tell us how at your hospital you're accommodating the unique circumstances that we're finding today for your patients. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, as Gwen has said, I'm Felicia Houston, and I'm with UChicago Medicine at Ingalls. And the circumstances have been um, very interesting during this time. Um, I think a lot of people don't think about the Department of Psychiatry during this time, um, how it impacts the Department of Psychiatry. So with COVID-19, it has affected us tremendously because people's anxiety level is increased by what's going on with COVID-19. Sure. And so with that, we had to make some changes. So we are still providing services, but we're doing it virtually. So we're doing virtual assessments. We're doing virtual psychiatric evaluations. We're doing virtual groups. Um, and then we're still doing some inpatient services for adults. Um, we're not doing um, inpatient for adolescents because adolescents don't understand social distancing. So sure. Um, <laughs> So Understood. we're not we're not doing that. <laughs> so okay, but now, during I understand. This time, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Queen. Uh, but I understand that this relates both to the psychiatric care as well as substance or drug abuse. Is that correct? That is correct. So okay. for those who don't uh, don't know, um, I think on Gen July the first, um, Illinois Addiction and Recovery Center closed down at um, they were renting space in the hospital, okay. and so we took over that program. So now we are offering psychiatric as well as substance abuse um, treatment. Um, but to be make it convenient for everyone, we just have one phone number for people to call, which is the seven zero eight nine one five six four one one. That is a 24 seven number, but sometimes, you know, during the night, if they were with patients, you may get a voicemail or it may just transfer you to the unit. But that is the number that you call for everything. Um, and they'll get you scheduled for an assessment, um, whatever you need, so that we can determine the appropriate level of care because, yeah, it's been really busy because everyone is affected by this. I think this is the first time that it's an equal playing field. So we're all affected by what's going on with COVID-19. Got it. And that would relate both to psychological as well as psychiatric services as well. Is that correct? Yes, that's, psychi that's psychiatric services um, as well as substance abuse services. You know, in dealing with this just as a general rule, you know, as a mental health professional yourself, I'm wondering if you can give us any advice, you know, because a lot of people are asking questions. They say they're suffering from increased anxiety or they're having a difficulty managing all the affairs that they need to handle. Can you give us some overall view of what the basic ideology is that needs to be implemented at this time? So I would say what most of us who are working from home, um, I still work from, I still go into the office about twice a week, but then I'm at home the other days. I would say that you, the most important thing is to have a schedule. So whatever schedule you were used to before this, to continue to follow that schedule because that decreases your anxiety level. So if you get up, if you're usually up and at the office by eight, continue to do that. You know, get up. It's simple. Get up, take a shower, yeah. get dressed, you know, right. eat breakfast. Um, and also have a designated working space at home. You know, so don't just work all over the house. You know, have you a designated area, a designated right. table, or if you can have an office just for work because that man that helps you to manage some of the anxiety. Um, and having a schedule helps to manage some of the anxiety. Like what time am I gonna be working? What time are the kids gonna do their schoolwork? What time is lunch? What time is dinner? You know, absolutely. And, sort. and so I think that I people think, need yeah, I think people need to understand that under the Family First Act that even the law anticipates that you may not be working eight continual hours in a day. You exactly. may have to work two hours in the morning, help your children get to school, eat lunch, come back for an hour. You might have to accommodate a change with your employer because the employer might have a different goal or objective in order to adjust exactly. the business at this time. Exactly. And that is, that is so true. Um, one school district, I'm, I'm their mental health consultant. And that is one of the things. So one of the, the requirements was that all of the staff log on at a certain time and log off at a certain time. And I explained to the director that 
that's the ideal, but that's not the case for everyone that you have to take into consideration that people are, are at home with their children or some people are caretakers for their elderly parents. Um, people are home with their husband that they may be taking care of. So you, everyone is not able to work at nine to five. You know, and at the same time, from the employer's point of view, you also have to perform your work. I mean, it's not yeah. that this is a time when we're working from home and it's not the same level of duty. You still have those duties. So trying to balance that is difficult for some people, but I agree with you, a schedule is imperative. Is there any else that you, advice that you would give to somebody listening to this? Um, I would just say be flexible, you know, like even though you have that plan or a schedule that sometimes it just doesn't work like you can you can plan to, to work from this time to this time right. but you're not planning for the kids to be hungry at a certain time you're not planning right. for a pipe to break like i think the first week our water heater went out on us so we weren't that, that is anything we have plan so i would say you know just you know have a plan but don't be married to the plan and realize that you know, there are some things that you can control and then there are other things that you can and just try to focus on what can I control during this time. And I think your schedule is what you can control. And I think overall the flexibility is what's needed is because you're not going to be able to get your work day done in those set hours. It's not the com easy compartments we were able to form before. Exactly. It's almost like everything's blended together. Would you agree with exactly. that as well? And I, and I think I would just add, um, is to communicate during this time. So to communicate to your hot, to whoever your direct is, so that they know what's going on. So they're not guessing, like, is she doing any work this week? What is she doing? Right. So maybe at once a week, you just send an email or a text, hey, this is what I'm working on. Like I do that with my boss. I send him a weekly thing, just say, hey, just sure. want you to know what I'm working on. I did this, 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 this. And he doesn't ask me for that, but I do that to communicate with him. Very good. And I guess the other feeling that people are saying is, I feel put upon. I feel like I didn't ask for this situation to occur, but you know, everybody has a unique circumstance, I think. What can you tell us um, which would be a good tip to move forward under that parameter? Yeah, I would just say just be realistic um, because yeah, we all, yeah, I think everybody feels put upon. Like I hear the moms all the time. The mom's like, I'm not a teacher. This is not what I signed up for. Right. I don't know anything about e-learning. I don't want to know about e-learning. So right. I would say just be realistic in what you can do. And then if you can't do it, you know, that's what the teachers are there for. Is teachers okay. are still getting paid during this time. So right. you have their email addresses. <laughs> email your teachers. Like the other day, my daughter, she said she was turning in these assignments, but her teacher said she wasn't. And so I just texted the teacher and the teacher was like, have her call me. And so she called her and they worked it out. I don't know how to do that. Right, so right. I would say just you utilize the resources that you have if you're having some difficulty and be realistic. They're not going to do eight, six hours worth of work at home. They're not. So the kids are not right. The kids are not. So right. and I think and you have to put that forward. Right. And it's not the same schedule. I mean, I think the other thing is, is that you're going to have to add some evenings. You might have to add some weekends to get it all done because it's a new exactly. day and a new circumstance. And I think uh, you have to adapt to the changing environment. Exactly. I have another question. You know, you're talking about breaking up the day and being flexible, but also how do you manage? I mean, you know, you feel like you're sitting there and you feel like you get nothing done all day. So I read a really good blog from somebody and they said, you know, I, when I first started working from home and this was before COVID-19, it was just saying, these are tips. It felt like all you did all day was read your emails because you never <laughs> yes. get anything done. So can you give some tips to somebody who's feeling that pressure? Exactly. So again, like we said, ha having um, a schedule or having a list of things that you're going to do, but some people have like a list of 30. That okay. is not realistic. You are not going to do 30 things in one day. <laughs> so I would right. say be more realistic. Like maybe have a list of 10 or right. five and that you can actually get to those things, you know, and then some things you're just going to have to say no to. So like, I know for me, a lot, some of those meetings, are they necessary? Do I really need to be on that meeting? Can okay. I just send, can they send me the notes on that meeting? So that Got you're it. not feeling like you're just in one meeting after another meeting after another meeting, which prohibits you from actually doing some work. So I would yeah. say be, be realistic um, before you say, you know, yes to people um, during this time, because everyone is pulling on you. Like I'm sure for you, Gwen, people are pulling, you know, cause legally they want legal advice. You know, for me, right. people want you to come on and they want you to talk about this and they want you to do this and do that. And it's like, I only can do so many of those in a day. Like I cannot do eight right. in a day because right. that's draining. So and then I also, I think you have to be realistic about how long something's going to take you to do. You know, it's, exactly. 
you know, in some of the things that I'm, I'm seeing, people struggle with this. What took them an hour before is now taking them four hours. And I think you have to identify why is it taking you so long? So what would you say to that issue? So the time management has, it was always an issue for, for some people, you know, it's, it, right. they had the time management issue in the office and now they're having the time management issue at home. So you can maybe set your clock, you know, where you're going to do something for 30 minutes straight, you know, or you're going to focus on one thing per hour. You know, I'm going to do this one project for one hour and then I'm putting it to the side. And then the next hour I'm going to work on another project and then I'm putting that to the side. So I would say do something like that and then make sure that you take your breaks during the day. Um, Got it. A lot of times if you just keep working and keep working and keep working, you need to take a break, you know, so that you can clear your mind and get back to being, to focus on what you're supposed to be doing, the task at hand. Now you're talking about time management. You were talking about reducing your level of anxiety, keeping a routine. What other tips in terms of just the management of your work area? Yeah, so keep your work area clean. <laughs> that would be, that would be ideal, you know, like keeping files um, like one young lady told me the other day that she was going to the office just to get her chair because she wants to feel comfortable. She knows that she's going to be at home for another 30 days right. or 31 days. <laughs> so she's going to the office to get her, her chair so that she can be comfortable. So I would say try to get your workspace as close as possible to what you're used to in the office. And then, you know, we may not all go back in right away. So let's say yes. we get past May it may be that your company or the governor's order or whatever else, or you have children home through the summer, you've yes. got to get used to this situation as well. Exactly. And I would say when you're talking about the school, and I don't want to alarm people, but I, I think we reduce our anxiety when, we, when we're when equipped. So I think we need to, as parents, need to start thinking about what are we going to do with the kids this summer? Because I don't think summer programs are going to exist right. this summer. And that's just right. my opinion. Based on what, we're, what we've already seen, I don't think summer programs are going to happen this summer. So again, what, what, what is the plan for the summer for the children? Start thinking about that now. That reduces your anxiety as well. But making sure that you just keep track of your time, that you're not spending 10 to 12 hours working. You know, that's not real. That, I know for some of us, that's realistic. But if that's not your, what you usually do, then you, you want to pay attention to how much time you're spending on each project. And it's probably taking you longer because of all the extra distractions at home. Right. And I call it time dribble because you can be checking emails and you get stuck with it. And then all of a sudden, two hours went by and you have nothing done. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so frustrating. So I do agree with you that blocking out the time, putting yourself on do not disturb to the extent you can, and everybody's got to create their own situation. So getting up early, working in the evenings yes. are creative ways to try to put yes. this together. I agree you with know, you. I, I like to get up early. So I get up early and get stuff done before everybody gets up because that's sure. what works best for me. So yeah, figuring out what, what works best for you so you can do your work because you do want to keep your job. <laughs> right. You can't just be at home doing nothing. You do have to produce. So. Right. You do have to produce. And there is stress on the businesses as well. When you think about exactly. it, production is down, money is down, income's down. There's a lot of balancing that has to occur here. And it's not just a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Exactly. So. And then I think for um, one group of people I was, I've been um, doing some mental health consulting with, they are very, very, very stressed out and they're higher up. They were like, she just doesn't understand. She doesn't understand. And I said to them, I said, you guys do know this is new for her too. You know, right. like you have your stress, but then she has everyone's stress. I said, right. so give her some grace because she's stressed out as well. She, nobody has ever seen anything like this before. So we're all on an equal playing field in regards to COVID-19. So overall, on an individual basis, what do you recommend that we walk away from this dialogue with? What are the final tips you would say? I would say the, the final tips for me um, is that while you're working um, from home, to make sure that you get up, <laughs> get dressed, take a shower like you would if you were going to work, have a designated work area, keep your work area clean, or keep it as close to your work area at work as possible. Um, have a time when, when it's time to shut it down, shut it down. You know, put your files away, clean that area up, and really pay attention to the time that you're spending on each project. If it means setting your watch for a certain time, then you do that. If do you need to work early, do you need to work late? What works best for you? And follow the schedule. And then don't forget, most importantly, don't forget to take care of yourself during this time. Because it's easy to pour into others, but you can't pour into others when your cup is empty. 
Got it. Well, this is really good advice because I know a lot of people are struggling, but we're in for the long term and life is never going to return to what it was before. I think our working our environments, the way we go to obtain medical care, the way we go to court, for example, in our case, yes. I think we're going to see so many changes. And I remember, and I want to share this with everybody as a wrap up, I remember when my parents would say growing up, well, that individual grew out of that position. It's no longer available. Maybe their industry changed, maybe computers or technology changed. I think this is another opportunity where we have to keep moving forward, get ourselves educated, adjust to the situation. Exactly. Any final thought, thoughts, Felicia, or how can people get a hold of you? Um, I would just say that during this time where people are experiencing increased anxiety where you cannot control it, then reach out to us. Um, U, U Chicago Medicine at Ingalls, the Department of Psychiatry. The number is 708 915 6411. There's someone there 24 7. These are licensed clinical um, people and they can help you as far as getting um, scheduled for an assessment for psychiatric services as well as substance abuse services. Very good. Thanks for your time today because I think this is important information that we learned from you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gwen. Take care.